What is going on ladies and gentlemen, Chase on Two Wheels here at Mountain Motorsports in Roswell for my first ever Husqvarna cherry popping. I have never gotten to ride a Husqvarna before and the other day I was in the showroom and I saw that they had this Husqvarna Vitpillin 401. It's a 2019 model. It's used but I was like, dude, I'm doing a first ride on it the second I get an opportunity to. So, I've got a lot to say about this motorcycle. If you guys cannot tell, I am super freaking excited. I don't even want to talk. I just want to get going. If you guys are as excited as I am for this first Husqvarna first ride, please make sure to like this video so I know you guys are excited as I am. Let's get this thing going, man. Alright guys, before I mount up the motorcycle, we are lucky enough to have a sponsor for this video. So, we are about to watch that, and of course, if you want to skip it, you guys know how we do. There's the skip time, but if you watch it, you know I'm just going to love you a little bit longer. Alright, let's get to the ad so I can ride this thing. <clears throat> What's going on guys? Today's video is sponsored by Shade Tree Glasses. If you guys have been on the channel for a while, you've probably heard me talk about Shade Tree Glasses because they make some of the coolest and my favorite glasses on the market. You know why? Because they're made out of real freaking wood. They even smell like wood. So guys, Shade Tree just released their new America line, which is pretty cool if you're patriotic, I guess, and live here in America, or if you just like really unique glasses. So what they sent me over were their pinstripe version and their flying tiger version. Check them out. So guys, the Flying Tiger is really cool, but I really love the pinstripe. One, because it's a cool shape that I really like, and I, they've had this shape before. I already know I like it, but on the outside, look, they just look black, right? On the inside, boom. Totally patriotic mode. Now, I don't think I'm allowed to show you what the text here on the inside reads. You guys are going to have to go over to Shade Tree's website and read it, but um, let's just say, America! That's here. You get what I'm saying. Oh, America, you're great. So guys, in all seriousness, these glasses are super high quality. They have polarized lenses. They have these really nice articulating arms and they're made out of actual real wood. The pinstripes here are made out of a stained maple and the flying tigers are like a layered bamboo. Even these are legitimately the things that they come in, which is made out of, I guess, like a bamboo. Super unique stuff. So guys, here's the deal. If you use my link two wheels to get a pair of shade tree glasses, you get $5 off. And the even cooler thing is if you order from their America collection, part of the sale actually gets donated to Operation Homefront, which let me make sure I say this correctly. Operation Homefront, which provides relief, recovery and support for both wounded veterans and the families in this time of need. How freaking cool is it that you can grab a patriotic set of shades and support the people that allowed you to live in this country and wear absolutely awesome patriotic shades. So yeah, guys, that's the deal. $5 off, you use code two wheels over at Shade Tree to get yourself some unique wood glasses. Anyways, guys, uh, let's get back to the first ride. Thank you, Shade Tree, for supporting the episode. And thank you guys for that use the link. You guys have no idea how helpful it is that you guys support the companies that support us to make this content. It allows us to do everything that we do here. So massively shout out to you guys that support these companies that support us. Let's go get our vroom vroom on on this first ride. All right, guys, here we are. 2019 Vitpillin 401. 
Uh, again, so let's go over the uh, the parts. This is used. This is aftermarket. The exhaust is aftermarket. So it is going to sound a little different, but obviously it should have the body of the sound that it will have. Let's mount up. Oh my goodness. So one thing I noticed from this bike from the get-go is it looks tiny. It, it doesn't take up a lot of space, but you sit up kind of high. My foot can barely touch the ground, but I'm tippy-toeing on the other one. I've got a 32-inch inseam. Let's, uh, let's mount it like we're supposed to. Look, I'm doing what you guys tell me, right? I'm, I'm setting up the mirrors before I go. All right, let's get this thing going. 2019 Husqvarna Vit Pillin 401. <laughs> yes. If there was ever a motorcycle that felt like a cafe racer, this would be it. Guys, I've been looking at photos of this thing, and you guys might be able to tell from this side profile in the camera car, but the handlebars are at the exact same position as the tank, which is the exact same horizontal position as the seat. This is like quintessential cafe racer ergonomics, and it's interesting. It, it feels, I've never ridden a bike that feels like this. It's so odd. Uh, first things to get out of the way, guys. One, I found out doing research for this video that Husqvarna is actually owned by KTM. Pretty cool facts. I don't know if you guys know that. I didn't know that. Uh, but in doing the research, I found out that the Vitpillen, which is what we're on now, and there's another model that's very similar. It's called the Svotpillen or something like that. Both of those motorcycles, there's a 401 and a 701, those motorcycles are mostly based off of the KTM Duke 390 and Duke 690 platforms. Same engine, same frame, I'm pretty sure the same forks and everything. Basically, Husqvarna just took that KTM 390 and 690 Duke and was like, hey, let's make it look really cool, you know, and change the ergos up. From what I can tell, that's what we're on right here. And it's kind of cool. I I love the look. I need to go ahead and get that out of the way. It is one of the coolest looking motorcycles I've seen in a very long time. We're standing here on the bike. I'm tippy-toed on both legs. I have never had a feeling of minimal things around me. Like I was telling you guys, this bike is a tiny motorcycle. You know, that little single cylinder engine from the 390 is tiny look down like it, this is small you know what i mean so it's kind of weird being on such a small little thing it it kind of has like this little toy vibe so first off body position surprisingly my legs are in a pretty comfortable position uh they are not crunched up i i've got plenty of room to move them around i'm actually comfortable from the waist down and on the top half of my body, I wouldn't say I'm super sport leaned over, but I'm definitely, my upper body is definitely in a forward position. My arms are going almost at a hard angle down to the handlebars. Now I guess I could scoot back and, you know, readjust if I wanted more of a sport bike riding position. But I, th I think it's pretty comfortable kind of sitting up towards the front of the seat. I've got enough room to kind of do my little, put an arm back and kind of chill and ride. But there's no denying, this is an aggressive upper body position for riding. It is going to be closer to a, to a super sport than something, say, like a naked or a scrambler. One of the cool things here is that we do have adjustable handlebars. I noticed that you can buy this thing for 4900 bucks at Mountain. One thing I'm not liking is, look at the clutch, guys. Look how much room we have. That needs to be adjusted. That is That does not feel safe. I just feel like I'm in a race position here with this body position. I'm, I feel like I'm ready to like get, get going forward. So far, the shifting feels okay. I wish I had a little more click when I'm shifting up. It, it uh, gives me a little bit of feedback, but just not as much as I'd want. Here we go. Let's get nobody in front of us and enjoy ourselves. If you guys ever want to ride a motorcycle that you can't tell you're not flying, 
like literally flying with nothing under you, like this is a bike to do it on. We just have so minimal of attack and it's so down. You know, I have to look this far down before I can see the tack. That's insane. If we look at the handlebar area, oh, we got triple trees and clip-on style bars down here. That's what's giving us those like leaned over ergos. Everything seems pretty simple up here. You know, there's no uh, fancy buttons. There's no fancy modes or anything like that. It's a pretty stripped down situation, but I'm kind of okay with that. You know, this bike has, has this real minimalist look and I don't think it would look right if it had all sorts of uh, buttons and modes and shit. You know, it, it, it just wouldn't feel, feel right. I am, should not be behind this thing. Oh, there's a little red shift light. Man, this thing has got some get up and go for a little 400 and I'm okay with it. Buttons are where that I'm wanting them to be. Oh no, we have the single turn light. I hate that. You guys know I rode a bike recently. What was it? What did I ride recently that had the single turn light? I don't know if I'm turning left or right, but it's just got one light on them. I, I don't, I'm not a fan. All right. Man, the pull that this little thing has is so cool. I don't remember the Duke 390 having this level of pull, to be honest. And that's the engine. The engine here is the Duke 390 engine. It's not messed around or anything. It's the full thing. But somehow this feels faster than the Duke 390 did. It might have been because this bike is used, has 2,800 miles on it, and I probably rode that Duke 390 brand new, and it was probably in transport lock. Bro, yes. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I love this bike. Oh, that's awesome. That's having that level of power on such a small bike is amazing. Honestly, it doesn't flick as it doesn't feel as lightweight here moving. You know, when I was moving it around the shop, getting it to the front door, it felt light as a feather, but we're we're not feeling like that as much now. Now that we've gotten going, must have a must have a slightly longer wheelbase, but I am totally here for it feeling more planted. Oh, that's so cool. This thing is fun as hell to ride. One of the things that I'm a little worried about with this bike, we don't got nothing up front. So the highway is going to be an interesting time. There is literally nothing. I tell the guys in the shop, and you guys probably know that watch my videos a lot, I am definitely one of those guys that will choose looks over function. Like, I'll, I'll choose something that just because it looks cool, even if it doesn't perform as good, this bike seems to be the embodiment of that. The bike looks cool as shit, but does it perform? You know, are these weird looking fairings helpful? We're going to see how it performs on the highway here, and I'll let you guys know. Since we have the red light here, we can look at the attack real quick. Uh... You know, we've got that classic Game Boy screen situation. I appreciate the look, but I would love an LED and some like TFT stuff right here. I, th you know, this bike has this really futuristic look. And then when we come to here on the tack and it's all like old school Game Boys, like the shit I was playing in the 1980s, like it, it kind of, it breaks me of that, that feel. You know, I, I tell you guys a lot, I love bikes that have an overall look and that look is carried through the entire motorcycle this bike does that but it's just braking in a spot like that like i need a i need a more hd dash dude i am so surprised with this engine right now i borderline shocked man leaning back <laughs> i put my body in a weird position just to see behind me luckily these mirrors are huge all right, we're on a 370 something cc single cylinder. Let's see what it'll do on the highway. Not past that cop though. Dang, we're already going 80? <laughs> Getting up though, we're, all right, we're gonna easily hit 100 on this thing. Dude, here's the thing. Here's that weird thing about the wind and on the highway. 
it's only we're on a naked bike and we're upright that a lot of wind is really bad because you're already upright but right now i'm leaned forward so much i can you know scoot back some and lean forward even more and now dude the wind's holding me up you know what i mean oh that's so cool this is this is not bad on the highway it gives me that kind of vibe of a of a super sport now i can feel the wind for sure there's no doubt about that i do feel like i'm getting whipped around a little bit <laughs> but dude i don't care i really don't i feel cool as shit riding this little thing hauling ass look i can look down here and i can see that one little neon strip on the front tire let's just hit three digits real quick just to show just to show that it can there it is oh that's awesome is it good for the highway no the wind's terrible but literally everything else is fine i've got enough power with no problem is that one of those new corvettes let's check it out oh it is my guy or my girl i like that that is cool she doesn't care um that's a really nice looking car dude good job corvette making something that looks like a fucking uh mclaren or some shit <laughs> all right guys give me a second to get off this highway so you can hear me and the wind won't be so damn bad bro my jacket just came unbuttoned what in the hell <laughs> that's how bad this freaking wind is dude my jacket is totally open right now you can't see it from the camera car but <laughs> that's hilarious oh my god let me get through our big turn guys and uh <laughs> we can talk through this oh shit all right how's it feel leaning over my jacket wide open I mean, I still have, I still got that kind of stability. I don't know though, I don't feel great leaning it over. Something just don't, don't really vibe with me. Yeah, I'm, that, I'm not a huge super fan of, of leaning this bike over. I would have, I kind of expected me to be. I kind of expected it to feel a little better than that, honestly. All right, dude, let me pull into here real quick and zip this freaking jacket up before it flies open even more. <laughs> okay jacket is now zipped all the way up let's let's not have that happen again honestly the power at lower speeds kicks on relatively quickly and will throw you back with no problem dude i am loving this engine right now no lie it is so much better than i remember the duke 390 being all right, so guys, let's talk about the uh, seat right now. I've been on it for a minute, and I do like that the ridges are in that seat. You know, that those have, have those little bumps or whatever. It kind of is keeping me stationary, which is good because we've got a lot of torque here. But over time, they're not really that comfortable. Like, I can start feeling the bumps in my butt. You know what I mean? So that's less than ideal. Other tiny things, uh, you know, using the controls up here, I do have some tactile clicking around, so I'm, I'm thankful of that. You know, we don't have many buttons up here, but the ones we do have, they're all clicky. I know when I'm clicking them, you know, when I've been changing lanes left and right. I'm definitely aware when I've, I've got my blinker on. I'm honestly a little surprised at how early the power, like, comes on strong. And uh, for a an entry-level motorcycle you know a sub 500 cc bike it's honestly surprising how much power you get out of it because you can you can really get into some trouble with something like this maybe not so much on the highway on the highway the power kind of thins out or whatever but here in city streets where i feel like you're going to be doing the majority of the riding on this thing it is like the perfect amount because, you know, we're always balancing that weight versus power. Because you can have a really big motorcycle and you can have uh, tons of power. But that adds a lot of weight and you don't really need that when you're in town. Yeah, it's, in, it's interesting to ride this thing around because it's a small motorcycle with a small engine. But it has, it, you know, leaning it over... 
it's low, it's more of a slow lean over situation. You know, it's not the type of thing on a super sport because we are we are leaned over, you know, body position wise. So you would expect to have that feeling of like, you know, you lean the bike over and you kind of fall over with it. That's definitely not the feeling you get on this. It's funny every time I look down at this bike, I'm I'm reminded at how tiny it is, like how thin. You don't really, you know, when you're going, you're not really focusing down here. You really are only focused on what's directly ahead of you because you can't really see this. It's it's only when you stop and look down, you're like, oh, right, this thing is tiny. Getting stuck behind a truck going slow. I will say the throttle's a little twitchy up front. Uh, you know, that when you just begin to turn the throttle. So that low speed uh, throttle modulation is going to be a little complicated for somebody that doesn't have a good throttle hand you know like if you don't have a lot of experience riding and you don't have that delicate moves with your hand figured out yet throttling smoothly at low speeds is going to be a little challenging for some people now we can have fun Man, this bike feels far more stable than it has any right feeling. Leaning it over, I get the sense I'm on a more, I'm, I feel like I'm on a bigger motorcycle. Holy shit, dude. Yeah, it's got that feeling of being on a bigger bike. It doesn't feel like this tiny little thin bike. Totally a motorcycle that has a small enough CC engine to where a newer rider could probably pick it up and be okay. It's just that throttling in the beginning of the uh, the pull that's a little challenging to get past but if you're an experienced rider you could totally pick this thing up and just rip the shit out of it everywhere you go and have a ball I gotta be honest guys after spending a minute on the uh, vit pill in here you know looking at the photos of this bike and all I really expected the body position to be kind of terrible and uh, I used to ride super sports and I have a bad back and all that kind of stuff so I was a little worried that it was going to be a little much for me but it's really not as bad as I expected it to be I, I'm finding this almost comfortable you know I don't I don't find myself naturally putting a lot of my weight on the handlebars like I was worried about I will say gripping the tank has been a little challenging there's there's this little white material here. <laughs> like, there's no getting away from the fact that this bike truly looks like you could buy it at Ikea. You know, you turn, you make a turn at Ikea, and then boom, here's our motorcycle options, you know? And, and this is the type of motorcycle that Ikea would put out. But it's got this white material on the fairing that you can't really grasp onto. So those are a little slippery, and I think that's kind of what's leading me to, you know, not have a ton of confidence in leaning it over. But, I mean, it's also the the rake and trail and the wheelbase of this motorcycle that's causing that. The, the kind of, not lethargicness, but I like the, using the words like stability in a turn. I feel stable. I feel like I could, like, hit a long turn and just, like, consistently go through it and not feel like I was going anywhere, which is so strange. It's such a tiny motorcycle. Anybody behind us? Let's hold on the brakes for a second. Oh, 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 there they are. All right. I got no problems with the brakes. I think they're called like Biber or something like that. It's some weird name for the brake company, but if I understand correctly, they're Brembo brakes from a different company. It's weird. All I know is that the brakes are, uh, they got some bite behind them, which is good. And it's also good that they don't have that classic Brembo, like, really hard bite. Some Brembos, when you barely touch it, you about to do a stoppy. But with these, I feel really like I can, I can lay on them, and they just progressively get, you know, stronger and stronger and stronger. I always prefer that, especially on bikes with lower CCs. Luckily, this bike does have ABS, so you don't have to worry too much about that. All right, guys, let's get off this little Vit Pillin 401 from the boys over at Husqvarna and check it out. All right, guys, here 
on Husqvarna's 401 Vitpillin. Damn, dude, legit one of the coolest looking motorcycles I have ever freaking seen. Uh, I am definitely more of a fan of the Vitpillin 401 and 701. Uh, the Swap Pillin's okay. If you guys are wondering, the Swap Pillin's basically the same thing, but with handlebars instead of clip on. So the body position is much different, and uh, it seems to have little knobby ish tires. Look at the attention to detail highlight, 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 highlights. Like, I, I so appreciate this. I, I also love the fact that they put the engine side covers. They just put Husky side covers on instead of the KTM ones. That's hilarious. You know, they put them in that little bronze color. Uh, honestly, dude, this is one of those bikes that I think I could legitimately buy and not do anything to. I'm not too big of a fan of the little handle on the back. I'm not really here for that. But, I mean, even the... Even the tail section, you know, having this stuff down here. I know some people don't like this, this little swing arm situation. I actually would prefer that over the ludicrous stuff that goes on under the tail. I'd prefer to have a more clean tail. Look how thin the bike is, though, guys. Super thin. Here's the thing we were talking about earlier. Flat line straight across the top. So crazy. I do think that this needs... I've seen a lot of these with um, uh, bar-in mirrors. Definitely a bar and mirror situation, but overall, just such a good looking bike. It's it's crazy that they can take a KTM Duke 390 and make it look like this. It almost looks like KTM gave their 390 Duke to a company that you know that makes custom motorcycles, and they like 3D printed all the parts, and this is just their mock up. You know what I mean? Like that's how cool of a vibe this bike has. But guys, before we get back going, uh, I'm going to take my my uh, required photo here for the boom Vitpillin. I post these over on Instagram. If you guys don't follow me, it's at c 2 Uh I post photos of all the first drive bikes that I do, and I also post some behind the scenes of how we do all our filming. I know a lot of you guys always ask, like, how do you get that camera car shot? Well, if you followed us over on Instagram, you'd see the behind the scenes stuff. So. And guys, I, I want to get back going. I'm I'm excited to finish this ride up. I've I've got some ideas for who I think this bike is for, and I wanna wanna talk with you guys about them. All right, guys, we're here on the 2019 Husqvarna Vitpillin 401. So as far as who is this bike is for, I realize that this bike is kind of engine-wise in that area of beginner bike zone. You know, we're in that 400, 300 range, but. I'm not going to say that this bike is something that a beginner should be looking into, to be honest, guys. Between the leaned-over body position and the ergos, you know, you controlling the motorcycle is going to be a little more challenging for somebody that's never ridden before. I also think the, the bike has a little too much power low in the revs that I think that could really get somebody in trouble that doesn't know how to control their throttle hand so because of that i'm not really gonna say you should start on this obviously you can do whatever the hell you want but there i feel like there are far better motorcycles that you could start on that would give you a better chance of really enjoying the riding experience the same reason i wouldn't recommend a bike like this is this honestly the same reason i wouldn't recommend a, a super sport you know, like that body position is, it makes riding a little more challenging. You know, you're leaned over and stuff like that. I honestly feel like there are so many really good options for beginner bikes these days that this was just not something that should be considered. But if you really love the look, then you can do whatever you want, man. Uh, I think for the price, Husqvarna is doing a phenomenal job and offering a really cool product. I think, honestly, this bike is more for the experienced rider that wants a really cool-looking motorcycle that they're going to ride the majority of their stuff around town because this thing is a rocket around town. Totally capable on the highway. I don't think I would really want to take this thing up to the mountains and do some super technical riding on it, but I would want to just flash it around town, man. That's, that's kind of where I want to ride this thing. And guys, that, that kind of brings us to the end of this first ride. 
I appreciate you guys uh, riding along with me today. And before we get out of here, I want to give a shout out to my boys over at Mountain Motorsports. That's the dealership we started at. That's the dealership I'm going to end at. Uh, there's the guys that let me ride all the bikes that they have so that I can do videos for you guys and let you know what bikes are like riding them for the first time. If you guys are in the North Georgia area looking for motorcycles, check out Mountain Motorsports. They have a massive, with a capital M, inventory of motorcycles. So it's a great spot to just go up to and, you know, sit on a few bikes that you're kind of looking into. It's uh, Sitting on motorcycles is really important. I definitely think all of you guys should do that before you buy a motorcycle. And, uh, guys, if you got to the end of the video, make sure to hit that like button. YouTube uh, always likes it when you guys do that. And uh, it spreads the videos out to more people, which allows us to do cooler and cooler stuff. So I really appreciate that. And guys, I appreciate you riding around with me. I've been Chase on Two Wheels. This has been a Chase on Two Wheels first ride. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Later. Outro crew, my guys. I did not expect to like this thing this much. Have you guys... I guess I'm curious now. Have you guys ever ridden a Husky? Am I like the only dude out there that's just like never gotten to ride one till now? And if you have ridden a Husky, what were your thoughts of whatever you rode? You know, like let us know what you've ridden. And let, let me know in the comments down below. Outro crew, you know I love you long time. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.